Alrighty, what well, morning everybody and once again it's cast time. So let me go ahead and intro this real quick um, This is gonna be some Native American flute music and this this was um, this actually came up as a live stream channel Just on my YouTube recommendations of like hmm sounds like some pretty interesting stuff and um and Thinking that uh, this stuff here was gonna be copyrighted. Uh, I didn't even bother checking so what it did inspire me to do is um, uh, I, I started pulling up some World of Warcraft torrent music, you know the bull race, the torrent. Um, I wanted to pull, I tried pulling up some of their music, but they, they fucked it up. Like they um, I think back probably in the 2010s, all that torrent, or I should say, all that World of Warcraft music was, was just um, it was just what kind of what you're seeing here. Just a simple still image, and then having all the like, or in my case, the torrent music playing in the background, like all of it from all the areas and all the territories and stuff. That was it. No, they decided to go ahead and they, they guess they tried to improve on perfection. They added a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of video footage. They added a uh, they added ambience, uh, birds chirping, and, you know, streams flowing and all that. But once again, basically they took everything great about the music and fucked it up so so yeah and yeah i probably could have uh i probably could have just pieced together all you know every single track from the uh from the touring race but that would have been a lot of work and then that also would have meant that it also would have meant that i would have to go through and check each and every one of those tracks to make sure that they're not copyrighted and I, again, these are these are these are individual tracks, so I would have to check each one separately. Um, the most I could probably hope for is is to actually make a full blown movie, like using Windows Movie Maker and all that. Ugh. So so I just figured it'd be faster to just go ahead and at least do a copyright check on this stuff first. And lo and behold, it's free to use. So. So yeah, yay me. <laughs> you know, cause I mean, I was expecting, you know, Native American music, you know, pretty pop culture, pretty popular. You know, the Indian tribes are probably out there, the great ghost bear said. Our music must be monetized by YouTube. You know, the great, the great running horse decreed that our music must be copyright protected. You know, or, or something. You know, you know that kind of thing. So I wasn't even gonna, wasn't even gonna bother trying. But again, this is a hell. This, trying to get you know getting this music is a hell of a lot faster than trying to go through go through jumping all those hoops to get the. Uh, the World of Warcraft touring music going. So, so. Okay, go ahead and fire it up. And I, I also forgot to say too that um, actually the touring music overall is that is better because what your this music here, I mean if you, if you saw it's about an hour long, so it's already gonna be pretty repetitious because it is Native American flute music, like. Like, that's it. So. Yeah. My, um, uh, the trackball in my mouse is starting to stick. So. But, anyway, um, for my, um, for my typical, or for my typical everyday pinball stream, it actually went pretty good this time. Uh, just like yesterday, so I mean, I wasn't I wasn't super stellar or anything like that. I wasn't tearing up the terrain, but just good solid performance overall so, um, The FX3 um, I don't like yesterday. I don't think I won any tournaments But I think um for the most part I, I, I still performed well you know, I played well so just average, above average. I think there 
you know, and I think there's probably the occasional one or two tournament here and that here and there that I shouldn't have bothered. Oh, and, uh, and these are um, and like I've said in um other other cast videos, I only I only do tournaments that I think that I can win. That have the score where the score looks doable. It looks beatable. So I don't just I don't just willy nilly, you know, jump into every single tournament I come across. Just the doable ones. So so generally speaking, if um if I place really low in a tournament, that's my fault. So it's more more of a bad choice on or it's just as much as, if not more so, just a bad decision on my part, and less uh, less so on the poor plane. So, but anyway, like I said, a good solid performer on FX3. Um, pinball arcade, like yesterday, the session started going to shit, but I had to kind of, like I did yesterday, I had to. I had to do a, it was something I used to do back in the day when I only streamed once or twice a week. Um, I call it handicap mode, where um, every table, or every table that I could to at least tolerate, or I could play for long periods of time, I have to, I call it handicap mode, where I, I'll set it to two players instead of just one. That way, you know, it's extra insurance. So if I really am sucking ass on a table, at least Potentially, I'll last longer than a minute, longer than your average average Zachariah table. So, but yeah, but because of that, because I started doing that, I'm having a much better time on Pinball Arcade. But um, and also something else too is um, if for some reason I actually do really really great on one player, I'll go ahead and just um, I'll just drain the balls. On the other player, like if I'm doing absolute, if I'm doing really bad, on like say player two, I'll just, I'll just let the rest of the ball drains and try to get a game over on it. Basically, I'm deleting that other player and just sticking with the one that I'm doing really great with. So, and and, I, and again, I only do handicap mode on tables that I like or at least tolerate. Like if uh if I get a really ass table, like. Like say Bone Busters or Ripley's Believe It or Not, I'm going one player on those. Like I don't want to deal with those any longer than necessary. But uh, um, I guess kind of a side note. This is probably mainly for people who have watched my pinball streams for a long time. Like Guitaro87 uh, comes to he he comes to mind. Um. Maybe J Hot Labs. That's another person I can think of. But my um my worst tables have kind of changed now. Um, Starship Troopers used to be my absolute hated table. Um, and I think I think Bone Busters was down there as well. Well, they kind of moved up now. They've kind of been promoted mainly because the tables on those the the games go by quick. So you know they're I, I mean, they're they're bad they're bad tables to be sure, but the the ball drains on them a lot quicker, so they're over with a lot quicker. So now, Ripley's Believe It or Not, and Frankenstein, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, are probably my, my, probably my most hated tables now, because those suckers drag. Whether it's whether it's long unskippable cutscenes, uh, whether it's just. The loops are so long, the ramps are so long, um, the, you know, like, the bumpers are so far away from the flippers that by the time the ball even gets out of them, it's pretty much going slowly down the playfield towards the, you know, towards my flippers. You know, just really slow. And, you know, I, I get it. The, these two tables are slower than molasses in winter. So, they're now my worst tables. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea. Hold on. So once again, kind of a kind of a quick recap. Um, 
Bone Busters and Starship Troopers have been promoted. Um, and now Frankenstein and Ripley's Believe It or Not are now the worst tables. So. But again, um, but again, because of all handicap mode, uh, Pinball Arcade should be a more enjoyable experience now. So. But that is it. That's it on the stream. Um, but otherwise, for the most part, I'm um, just sitting around watching TV, or I should say watching YouTube stuff. Um, I think I, I took one nap. Um, I really feel like I should have taken another before doing this cast, but I figured, fuck it. So, but, um, one thing that did stick out, I watched, uh, I watched a video from one of my favorite channels, Spectre Sound Studios, and they were talking about, uh, he came up with, uh, like, ele like, 10 or 11 vocalists, metal vocalists that are worth listening to. Um, and, um, uh, and yeah, I did, I did check, I did check it out, and I think all of maybe, maybe two that I could think of, the rest, I, I, I can't stand it. Um, I know back in the 90s, and I think the 2000s, maybe the 2010s, me, like quite a few other people were not fans of new metal. I'm um, not a fan of Limp Biscuit or Linkin Park or, you know, those kind. Um, I think back then, I used to say either, what is it, either you have balls or you have no balls, but you can't have both. Either, either you got a, either you got a cock or you got a mangina, or no, either you got a cock or you got a vagina, but not both. So, it's a... So yeah, it's, I mean, these days, I think the terminology they use is either you're using harsh vocals, you know, like, see, that's for cookie, you know, that kind, like the Cookie Monster, Cookie Monster vocals, or the, uh, the clean vocals. It's the real whitey's voices that Lip Biscuit does, you know, that kind of thing, where they, they, they kind of sound like Spongebob, but more whiny, you know, that kind, but yeah, that, if I hear both of them in the same song it's an immediate deal breaker right there so i mean i like i like the harsh vocals i'm not a fan of the clean vocals but i again what's worse than both of them is when they try to do both in the same song so but yeah a good chunk of the a good chunk of the vocalists that i checked out were doing just that you know and there's like a few i can't remember their names but to their credit at least the the very little bit of footage that I was listening to of them, um, you know, some of them you know sounded like Limp Biscuit, but at least the stuff that I heard from them, it was like all all wimpy. So he, I gotta give him props on the consistency. And, and then uh, something else, you know, something else too. Um, it was um, uh, I think um, oh, I think his name is Glenn Frick. The, the guy the guy who does um he's the host of Spectre Sound Studios but um I think he said the same thing in one of his other videos too um the granddaddy of um, the granddaddy of them all I actually have the album Fear Factory Soul of a New Machine I believe and I think he said the same thing too they were the first band to do that kind of shit you know it's just at one point support bastard you know got to get away and next thing you know suffer bastard suffer bastard you know like that like going back and forth like that in the same song huge no-no with me and and with him too i believe but yeah so again kind of a recap some of these modern vocalists were doing that very same thing. Trying to do both. Uh, again, big no-no. So, um, 
But I guess if, um, if somebody really, if anybody is curious as to what my, um, what my favorite kind of metal vocals are, um, these days, or I guess the short answer, as far as, for lack of a better word, traditional metal, I'm, to quote Miles Davis, I'm not there anymore. So, so yeah, the modern metal that you probably hear, hear a lot of, I just, I don't get into. It isn't because I hate it, or because it like royally sucks, it's just, again, I'm not there anymore. So, but these days, um, these days I'm into, or I, I should say, those that have checked out my other cast know that I'm a huge fan of black metal. I mean, especially Norwegian black metal. Like the, like the real, the real, yeah, screeching voice, hey, Tom, you know, that kind of thing. I can't get my voice that high, but, but yeah, that's the stuff I'm into. Like, um, Emperor, um, Emperor comes to mind. I think, uh, I want to say Mortise. He didn't have a high screeching voice, but he did have kind of a, kind of a, uh, I, I can't find the word for him, but, but yeah, but I guess um, back in the day when I really was listening to metal, Pantera, bar frickin' none. That the um, actually I recall it now. Back in the in the 2000s, um, I was at a bar. I was at a bar, and I think I think it was Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, they had a jukebox going. It was the first time I heard Pantera. Far Beyond Driven. I the moment I heard Phil and Selmo, I frickin' loved it. So, but yeah, that, but yeah, that would, that's, so yeah, that, but like I said, I don't really listen to that kind of metal anymore. Um, these days, if I do listen to metal, it's going to be the black metal stuff. And I guess, I don't want to say, for lack of a better phrase, it's Distant Cousin, Dungeon Synth. I mean, that, that's the stuff I'm into now. Music's still going. Okay, so one other thing I do need to I do need to get this out quick. One thing I one thing I tried doing is um again I don't wanna I don't wanna go too involved in this but I pulled out my voice recorder and uh, I actually tried to record part of my cast so I did that um and and I also had um I also had this music going in the background and um uh, it did seem to work. But, um, so one thing, one big upside to that is, uh, I could, uh, I could do these cast videos without having to wear my earphones or without having to wear my headphones because I can now, um, I could hook the background music up to, I could have it set to, or I could have my OBS set to capture my external speaker and me talking. So pretty big bonus you know and just do all the things I normally do in my cast but just the audio only just me talking with the music going in the background so that works but on the downside though on the downside though that means that 
I still have to make the video portion of it, and to this day, I still can't, I still can't find a movie maker worth using. I'm stuck. That's, this is all I got. Windows Movie Maker, and it's pretty ass for the things I want to do. So, all it's good for is just, um, is just cutting. Cutting and editing, but as far as, like, and I've said this in other cast videos, too, I could do a lot more with, o with this OBS program. A program that's not even designed to make movies with. I mean, I got more functionality on OBS than I do Windows Movie Maker. You know, a piece, you know, software designed to make movies with. So, a bit convoluted. So, but like I said, um, so, so that's there though. I can record just the audio part of the cast video. All I need now is a good movie maker. One that's free and one that doesn't require a trial. Um, I found one that was open source like OBS is, but on the downside, it it's real buggy and crashes a lot. You move one window or I you know, I'll upload one image and then boink it kill it kills the program. So I'm gonna have to hunt for something else. So, um, but otherwise, that's going to do it for me, everybody. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call it good. I've said all the things that I wanted to say this morning, so, so I had a doer. Um, but otherwise, uh, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And this will be my last cast for the week. So my work week has started up. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, that's my work week. So... You won't be hearing from me again until Sunday morning. And that also assumes that I don't call in, that I don't call in today. That I don't call in on Wednesday for whatever we reason. I had to do that last week because it was a freaking storm. You know, because of a storm warning and there was a tornado watch thrown in there as well. I figured, no. Nah, discretion is the better part of valor. So, but once again, thanks to everybody for dropping in. I appreciate that. Always do. And I'll see you all on Sunday morning. Take care and bye for now.